Ephesians chapter 5. We read about uh, walking in love in verses 1 through 7 of this chapter. And then walking in light, verses 8 through 14. Now we're going to read about walking circumspectly or walking in wisdom. Verse 15 of Ephesians 5. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. So in telling us to walk circumspectly, Paul is saying to walk with all care in perfect and upright manner, to walk diligently, carefully, accurately. All of these words help us to understand the, the word circumspectly. And uh, in describing what he means by it, he says, not as fools, but as wise. He says, redeeming the time. The fool kills time. Paul in uh, in Ephesians 2, verses 1 through 2, he described our former life before Christ as meandering according to the course of the, this world. Just kind of just going with the flow, just really wasting time. But time is short. And there needs to be an urgency to do the Lord's work. Jesus had an urgency to do God's work. In John 9, 4, he says, I must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. The night is coming when no one can work. Romans 13, verses 11 through 12. And do this, knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. The night is far spent and the day is at hand. Therefore, let us cast out the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Right now, if the chair, a lot of the church is sleeping, but now is high time. If there was ever a time for us to wake out of our sleep, it's now. And uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 7, starting at verse 29. But this I say, brethren, the time is short, so that from now on, even those who have wives should be as though they had none. Those who weep as though they did not weep. Those who rejoice as though they did not rejoice. Those who buy as though they did not possess. And those who use this world as not misusing it. For the form of this world is passing away. And he goes on to say in verse 32, um, but I want you to be without care. He who is married cares of this things, of, uh, unmarried cares of the things of the Lord, but he, how he may please the Lord. And he goes on to say, if, you, if you're married, you have to seek to please your spouse. And and it, Paul's not saying for you to, to abandon your family, to abandon your wife. Because in other places he says to love husband. And later on in this chapter he says husbands love your wives as Christ loved the church and Christ wouldn't abandon them. But what he's saying is this. Don't let your, uh, as you go down the list of the things that he named. Um, don't let your family, emotions, possessions, material things distract you from the things of the Lord. He wants you to be care uh, without care. To do the things of the, of the Lord, to do His work, it's easy for us to get caught up in things that we become distracted from the important things of the Lord. Um, and it's easy for our possessions to begin to possess us. Psalms 90 verse 12, teach, so teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. And again, he's saying walk circumspectly, walk wisely, and he's talking about uh, Time management, pretty much. And this verse, Psalms 90, verse 12. So teach us to number our days that we may have a heart of wisdom. Because we only have a certain amount of time here on earth that the Lord has given us. And I want to use it to the max. So walk diligently. I will seek to redeem the time. There are so many things that we do today that are a waste of time. They have no eternal value. And... Man, I wonder how many accumulated hours we waste watching TV, just on our phones, on Facebook, social media, whatever, doing nothing, playing video games. And then we say we don't have time to read the Bible. We don't have time to pray. It's not that you don't have time. You don't make time. You're wasting time. We only have one life and it will soon be passed. And only what's done for Christ will last. So I will walk 
accurately knowing what the will of the Lord is. It goes on to say, verse 17, Therefore do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. So, I'll, I will walk accurately, knowing what the will of the Lord is. I want my life to precisely follow God's plan and purpose. It's not wise to leave God out of your planning. It's not wise to lean on your own understanding. It is wise to acknowledge Him in everything, asking Him to direct our path that we might walk in His ways. Verse, uh, if, well, if you're not seeking God's will for your life, um, then you're missing your the reason why you're here on earth. Verse 18, And do not be drunk with wine, which is discipline. Uh, dissipation but be filled with the spirit wine is a mocker Proverbs 20 verse 1 says strong drink is a brawler and whoever is led astray by it is not wise so a man who is under the influence cannot walk perfectly he staggers and stumbles and dissipation is a good word for it it's a waste that's what it means and it's a waste of your time. It's a waste of your mind. A waste of uh, your money. You're not getting that back. And he... Um, in verse 16, it says that the days are evil. Why are we to redeem the time? Because the days are evil. Which means the Lord is com Lord's coming is, is soon. 2 Timothy 3.13 Evil days shall wax worse and worse. Talking about the coming of the Lord. And uh, just to review kind of this redeeming of the time and how to walk circumspectly. These are This is how to walk circumspectly based on these, um, these passages. Um, you redeem the time. It's redeeming the time. That's how you walk circumspectly. It's understanding what the will of the Lord is. It's being filled with the Spirit. Galatians 5.16 I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. And the last one, speak to yourself in Psalms and spiritual Psalms. Verse 19. Speaking to yourself in Psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, speaking and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Think, always thinking of the things of the Lord, just having the things of the Lord in your heart. Giving thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of of our Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> and just to again emphasize on, uh, on the, the will of the Lord. Because this is a very important topic. about Because if we begin to use our time more wisely. We can, we can see things happen. We can see revival happen. We can see people getting saved. So about understanding what the will of the Lord is. So many people are confused as far as God's will for their lives. The purpose and the plan of God for their lives. They don't know. They go on just sort of continue, continue, continuing wasting time. Continuingly. Still doing their own things. Never really seeking God. Never really searching for the will, the will of God for their lives. They never ask, God, why, do you, why did you put me here? Uh, what do you have in mind for me? What work is it, Lord, that you want me to accomplish for you? Why did you place me on this planet? God, God placed each of us here with a purpose. And uh, it was Paul's aim to do his, the work that God had for him. Philippians chapter 3 verses 12 through 14. Not that I have already attained or I'm already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Be, brethren, I do not count myself to be apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching toward those things which are ahead, I press forward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. He presses on. Jesus in Luke chapter 2, whenever they uh, Mary and Joseph can find him, he says that I must be about my father's business. And you may be hearing this and thinking, well, I want to know the will of God, but I, I don't know and I don't know how. So how can we know the specific will of God for your lives? Well, God needs to be the one to tell you that. I can't tell you that. 
But Romans 12 does give us a, um, a way to search it out. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may be that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Per Romans 12, verses 1 through 2. So you give yourself to him. Lord, this is this life is yours now. My life is yours. And you give yourself as a living sacrifice. You think about the burnt sacrifices that they did in the Old Testament. The burnt sacrifice, obviously, he was dead. <laughs> that Number one, it was dead. So you die to yourself. It was dead and it stayed on the altar since it is dead. It stayed on the altar until it was fully consumed. And you stay on that altar. And notice that the sacrifice was killed. It says for you to be a living sacrifice. So you stay on that altar. Don't get off when things get tough. You stay on that altar until you're consumed. And as you give your life to the Lord and you seek to just be used by Him, He will guide and direct and He will open doors and you just continue to walk in them. And before you know it, you're going to be in His will. And again, in the last, the, one of the, I don't know if it was the last or the video before, we were talking about the vessels in the temple. They were they were sanctified, set apart for God's service. And we, you, are to be like the vessels, setting yourself apart to be a vessel with which He does His work in and through. And God often reveals His will one step at a time. This is where we often have difficulty because we want him to spell out the whole picture. But God often does not reveal step two until we have done step one. And you think of Philip in Acts chapter eight. We see that happening. There was a revival happening and God told him to go to the wilderness. He didn't tell him why. Once he got there, he said, go and talk to the Ethiopian eunuch. And it was just one step at a time if you look at that story. But do you know the will of God for your life? Seek to know it. Seek to know the will of the Lord. And and if and do not be drunk with wine again, which is dis, dissipation. It's a waste. But be filled with the Holy Spirit. And if you're and if you're here and you, you uh and if you have a drinking problem, because a lot of people a lot of us do or did, just know that just, the Lord can give you power and strength over it if you seek him. The foolish world is filled with the wine that clouds their minds on eternal issues. The wise man is filled with the spirit which sharpens his mind. And closing again, verse 20, giving thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Paul said in uh, 1 Thessalonians 5.18, In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Sometimes things happen in our lives that we don't understand and it seems impossible to be thankful. This is because we only see in part and know in part. This is where we look not at the things that are seen, but the things that are not seen. We look to the Lord and remember the promise. Romans 8.28 We know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to His purpose. You give it over to the Lord, He can make good of it. In verse 21, submitting to one another in the fear of God. And this is kind of like a, a bridging the gap between this section and the next section. Uh, and Paul's going to go on to show us how our relationship to Jesus Christ should affect our relationship with each other. He first dealt with uh, our relationship with God and now our relationship with others.